you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name's Kazmer Dikasatis. Just to clarify a few things. First of all, it's Marist College, emphasis on the first syllable. Second of all, I was an executive with IBM for over 20 years. I'm currently working with Marist College and the New York State Center for Cloud Computing and Analytics. More about that in a second. And this morning, I'm going to talk to you about some DevOps efforts that we've got going on open source for software-defined networking in cloud computing. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit about some open source code that we've written to integrate with Open Daylight SDN network controllers. It allows us to dynamically provision capacity in a cloud network, both within and between data centers. So multi-layer, including the optical transport network. And I'm going to show you a short video, about eight minutes long, demonstrating how this works. I'm not going to try to do it live, because I've had bad experiences with that. But I'm going to show you a short video of how this thing runs, so you get a feeling for the code we've written. Now, before I get into it, just a very quick introduction for the folks who helped pay for my plane ticket out here today. How many folks have heard of Marist College before he mentioned it? Just me, great. Okay, a couple of folks. That's not too bad. You're just being nice. You don't know what it is. Marist College is in upstate New York. We're about an hour and a half north of New York City. About two years ago, the governor of the state of New York gave us a $3 million grant and named us as the New York State Center for Cloud Computing and Analytics Research. So you want to do cloud development in New York State, you come to us. Now, the school's been around since about 1905. We've got about 6,000 undergraduates, about 1,000 graduate students. And we work with other academic and industry partners. So as you can see from the slide, uh, we work with Cisco, IBM, Adva, Siena, Brocade, a whole host of industry partners, too many to mention all by name. I also work with a number of academic players, so that includes the state and city universities of New York, uh, Columbia University gets us into the Ivy League, Caltech, our code has been used by CERN Labs in Switzerland on the Super Collider. You might have seen us on the floor at VMworld about two years ago. You also might have seen us at SDN NFV World Congress in Germany. We're a member of Internet2. We're in the process of installing a 100 gig link, 100 kilometers dark fiber between our campus and a peering point in downtown Manhattan so we can better branch out to some of our global partners. So our mission is to make SDN a better part of the cloud. Now, if you went to my breakout session on Monday morning, and how many people did? How many folks went to my breakout? Again, just me, wonderful. I feel so popular. On Monday, my breakout session, Cloudy with a Chance of SDN, it's out there on the website, download the slides, you would have seen a chart like this. It turns out that we're focusing on the network because that's where our bottleneck is for cloud virtualization. If you're a server or a storage admin, you have at your disposal some very sophisticated software that lets you spin up virtual machines, make them bigger or smaller, move them around, get rid of them when you're done in a matter of minutes. Same for storage. If you're on the network, you're doing it manually with a command line interface. As recently as two years ago, Cisco executives were admitting that it takes about a week to provision an end-to-end -end network service in a cloud data center. That includes your firewalls, load balancers, routers, ACLs, everything else. If you want to go between two data centers, long distance over optical, it's going to take you weeks, possibly months. So our goal is to make the network more agile, to spin up these connections in minutes rather than days or weeks, and we're going to do it using open source code. Our big push is around the Open Daylight Controller. You heard them mention that during the opening session. The Open Daylight Controller is functionally very similar to Cisco's own network controller because Cisco contributed so much of their code to Open Daylight. Open Daylight sponsored by the Linux Foundation, the same people who brought you the Linux open source operating system, and I think we all agree that worked out pretty well. Open Daylight gives us the ability to provision any type of device that speaks any of those open APIs on the bottom. I'm going to be focusing mostly on the OpenFlow protocol, but we also have applications that use uh, SNMP 3.0 for devices that don't natively speak OpenFlow. So you'll see all of that coming up. The code that we've written integrates right into Open Daylight. 
So I'm going to be launching my applications directly from the open daylight screen. I don't need to open up a second window or anything else. All of this fits very nicely into Cisco's open network architecture. Now since I'm talking about open source, I've got to give this a plug because as of today, this is the first and currently the only network architecture independently certified by third parties to be fully open source compliant. So this is not Cisco saying it, this is not even me saying it. There's a report referenced on the slide. We can get you that link if you're interested in it. Independent third party verification that this thing is based on open source. It allows us to do things like uh, network management without using a proprietary CLI. So we can do GUIs, make it easier for people to visualize what's going on. We can do multi-layer, so again, within and between data centers from one common controller. And I'm going to show you some of that and motivate it with a couple of use cases that we see in our cloud computing lab. I can take that whole stack that I just showed you, for example, and put it inside that little blue box and spin it up to build a virtual CPE if I have to be a telco or a service provider. I can also put this thing into a cloud service provider and I can use it to spin up cloud solutions. One of our big areas is disaster recovery. I'm going to be talking about that later this afternoon. I've got another DevNet session at 1 o'clock where I'm going to show you how we do automated backup and recovery solutions using the building blocks that we're setting up this morning. But for now, I'm not going to get too much into the automation. I'm going to focus on the open source aspects. Now, this is the stack that we used at our SDN test lab at the college in order to build these solutions. So it's based on OpenStack middleware. Uh, we're running both KVM and VMware environments. Uh, we have an orchestrator on top, which can be either open source or it can be from one of our vendors. Uh, IBM has something called the IBM Cloud Orchestrator, ICO. Cisco has orchestrators. There's also open source alternatives we can plug in. I'm going to be focusing on the lower layers of this stack. You can see that we've partitioned the network into different zones. Every zone is managed by its own network controller. So one can be running open daylight, one can be running another open source controller like Floodlight, which is the big switch controller, or they could run proprietary vendor specific controllers, doesn't matter. Those individual controllers are in a hierarchy. They feed up to the central controller that looks at the whole thing end to end. And that, of course, talks to the Neutron interface in OpenStack. So the code we've written uh, is down on that lower part, integrating with the Open Daylight controller, but it's running inside this stack in our data center. This is the lab environment that we're working in. My test bed has three data centers, which I have creatively named A, B, and C. They're located on a ring, 125 kilometers of single mode fiber, 50 clicks between A and B, 50 more from B to C, and 25 more to close the ring. Every one of those data centers, I've got IBM mainframes, x86 blade and rack mounted servers, a couple of terabytes of storage, and a whole bunch of different switches. We're using a bunch of the Cisco hardware, both old and new, 6500s as well as some more recent stuff. I've got Plexi switches, they're a startup, I've got the IBM Lenovo branded product, Brocade. We're getting some Juniper gear in there shortly. So we're big into multi-vendor interop. And we're big into open source code for multi-vendor. Now, the optical transport boxes have a network hypervisor that I'll show you in a minute. That hypervisor speaks OpenFlow. So the optical boxes themselves are not native OpenFlow. They talk SNMP through their control card. But there's a hypervisor that translates that into OpenFlow. And then we can work with the APIs from that hypervisor and build extensions into Open Daylight. So the demo I'm showing you is going to be our code running in this environment. I'm going to be provisioning links on the optical network in about 60 seconds instead of taking days or weeks to do it. Now, naturally, I could use that same controller to provision all of the Ethernet switches at any one of those three sites, but that's easy, so I'm not going to waste your time doing that this morning. Again, three sites, A, B, and C. Everyone has Ethernet switches from Cisco or other vendors that speak OpenFlow. We have three nodes. This happens to be Adva's optical transport, the FSP3000 platform. 
We also have some Sienna Metro Ethernet gear, which isn't on my slide, and we're getting some other vendors in shortly. Uh, so we have an optical ring, and we have Ethernet switches at every node. So the first thing we do is we stick an Open Daylight controller on top of that. And Open Daylight uses OpenFlow southbound API to run all the switches in every data center. Again, that's easy. The next thing we're going to do is we introduce this network hypervisor. This is a vendor-specific piece of code, but it is available for developers and third parties to use from Adva's website. This thing is going to allow me to build connections to the Adva boxes. So even if the box doesn't natively speak OpenFlow, it does talk SNMP. I have a custom MIB that we built. We can talk to that through our controller and then back to Open Daylight. Now I can start doing some interesting stuff. I can actually introduce uh, some new code that we have written that we called Advalanche, just to have an interesting name. Advalanche is open source code like everything else. It's on our website at Marist College. And what that does is it allows us to dynamically provision the network and enables things like virtual slicing. So if I'm a service provider or a cloud provider, I can carve up this into a multi-tenant network. I give every tenant on that ring a chunk of bandwidth. Then I let every tenant optimize their bandwidth with a controller of their choice. It doesn't have to be the same controller that was used to slice the network. As long as it speaks OpenFlow, it'll work. I have an example that has two cases, one slice running open daylight, one slice running floodlight. I could just as easily use the Cisco controller or anybody else that happens to speak OpenFlow. And in fact, we've got instances spun up in the lab using Knox and a whole bunch of other controllers that I'm not going to have the time to talk about. So I can do virtual slicing. I can give the tenants the ability to optimize their traffic because they know what the application is better than the service provider does. I've decoupled the service provider's controller from the controllers that are being used in every individual slice. The other thing we've done is we've stuck a GUI on top of this to make it easier to manage. So you'll see Advalanche displaying those three nodes, A, B, and C. And you'll see links drawn in representing 10 gigabit optical wavelengths that tie those nodes together. Those links are going to show up in different colors, green, yellow, or red. Green means I'm able to carry the amount of traffic that you're pushing over me. Yellow means I'm marginal. Red means I'm at capacity. I am carrying my peak amount of traffic. Do not put anything else over me. In fact, provision another wavelength if you want to carry anything else because I can't handle it. So we can use this to create graphical heat maps and you can tell at a glance where the congestion spots are in the network and take action appropriately. Now in the demo, I'm going to draw those links in manually. I know that you wouldn't do this in a real network. It wouldn't be possible. But we would have a short script written in Python or Java which would orchestrate how these links are to be drawn in. This afternoon in my DevNet session, I'm going to show you how to automate it. So we actually have sensors, very cheap hardware, 100 buck cards built into those three nodes that does bandwidth monitoring. So this afternoon's session is going to show how we dynamically monitor the bandwidth and write a policy that automatically provisions more capacity on the optical network when those links start to turn red. But that's for later. This morning, I'm not going to be quite that ambitious. I'm going to do it manually. Now, as I've said, this is going to be a short video because I don't trust these live demos anymore. But just for fun, so that you know, we spun this whole thing up on a mobile interface which means if I wanted to, I could run this whole demo off my Android smartphone or my iPad tablet. We've got mobile apps for all of this stuff. Think about the disaster recovery application I mentioned earlier. If you hear that there's a hurricane coming to your data center, you're going to head for the parking lot and try to drive to higher ground. On your way to the parking lot, you pull out your phone, do a secure login, and one click provision the button that says disaster recovery policy. The system will automatically reprovision into a backup and recovery topology, move all your data, and then go into any other topology that you've programmed. That's the kind of flexibility that we're seeing now with these proof of concepts. We've got a couple of clients in early phases of adoption. We mostly work with financial sector people in New York City, the Wall Street area. 
Uh, but I'm not going to talk about the clients today. Instead, I'm going to take a minute and switch over to my video and walk you through a demo of how this actually works. Now, with any luck, this will work. Let's find out. And here she goes. All right, we are live. Except it's not showing up on the screen. That's always fun. Uh, let's see if we can figure out why it's not showing up on the screen, folks. So as you can see, there's multiple data centers here, and they've all got 10 gigabit links. Use your imagination. Work with me here. There's <laughs> either that or trust me, right? Like I said, I never trust live demos. That's why I recorded it so I wouldn't have this issue. <clears throat> yeah, how do I kill this thing? I've got to get uh, showing up on here. It's not showing up on there. I've got to pop out. Okay, hang on. I can do that for you. Where is the mouse? Can you duplicate the monitors for me while I talk? Okay. Yeah, down in there. Okay. So while we work through the technical difficulties, um, boy, it's been sunny out here in San Diego, hasn't it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, I saw Steve Tyler the other day walking through the Bay Breezeway. No? Maybe not? I don't know. Okay. We're trying to duplicate the monitors here so you can see my video. It's showing up on my screen, but it's not showing up on here. Uh, what we're going to be doing in just a moment, I hope. How's it going? Duplicating monitor? Okay. Here she comes. Uh, getting there. Okay, nice. Now, if you could just pull up the video, the little, no, to the right, the little cone on the bottom, yeah. And then hit play. Lower left corner. Lower left all the way on the bottom. There it is. And that should be playing. Okay, it's playing. So, so what you see here is the open daylight controller screen. You can see the breakout screen here on the left, which has my optical network and my switches. And this view, I've abstracted the whole optical network, so it's one box in the middle. I'll blow that up in just a second. Three nodes on the network. They all have Ethernet switches. They all have multiple 10 gig links interconnecting to that central node. I can come over here on the right and see the topology. I can also go up on the top and click flows, and I can see all the flows that are provisioned over this fabric. Now let me just see where I am, because this has been running for a little bit, and I hope it's still running. Yep, good. So what I'm going to do is draw a link between nodes A and B. And that link shows up as red on the GUI. I do one click provisioning off the screen on the left. Now, that's physically going down through open daylight to the ADVA box and provisioning that hardware to carry traffic. And it takes me about 60 seconds to do that. You'll notice that I launched this view natively inside open daylight. So I'm still looking at the open daylight screen, but this is code that we wrote to show you the topology of the optical network. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but if I mouse over that link, it brings up a little bit of a dialog box. That shows me the traffic that I'm pushing, the ID of the link, and some other useful information. So I can mouse over things and get a quick shorthand view of what's going on, or I can go over here and click in the pane on the left, refresh that screen, and it'll show me all the flows and all the traffic. I can do the same for the nodes. Let's draw another link. It shows up as gray at first because I haven't provisioned it. I'll go over here to the left and do one-click provisioning. That link is going to flash on and off for a few seconds, and then it'll come up green, and it'll show you that it's ready to carry traffic. So I know at a glance that I've got two links connected. One's able to carry 10 gig. The other one is right on the hairy edge of supporting 10 gig. I better not push any more traffic over that link. And it's just that easy. I can drop and drag links anywhere that I want in this topology. I'm going to draw some more links for you in just a minute. We'll close the ring between those last two nodes. And again, everything that I'm doing by clicking and dragging manually, I could do with a little script that would automate this thing. And we've written some scripts in Python. It's all open source. It's available on our website. In fact, the Advalanche application for Open Daylight is available open source on our website. So if you want to play with optical network provisioning, this is a good place to start. Now I've drawn a second link between nodes A and B, and I'm going to provision that one because that link was red. That means it was just on the hairy edge of failure. So I'm going to put in a second channel. Now I've got 20 gig worth of bandwidth between those two nodes. 
The second channel turns yellow in just a moment, which indicates it's in a marginal state. I'm carrying the traffic, but I better not push it too hard. The first link stays red as a reminder that by itself, it would not be enough to carry that traffic. Again, I can click on the flow tables here on the left, and I can see all the details. Those little scripts I get when I mouse over the link are all drawn from the flow table creations. So I could go back into those through the API and pull that data out and use it in a script, and I could run match action tables against it. So if I wanted to do some more involved programming, the raw data is there. I'm gonna close the ring now by drawing in another link. That one will provision and come up green. So normally it would take you a week or more, probably several weeks, to call your service provider on the phone and tell them that you were trying to provision a connection. I've drawn, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, 10 gigabit links while I'm talking to you in under a minute. Those are live provisioned on the system. They're ready to push traffic. They're giving me live status feedback from the Adva boxes. I can pop into a display view like this and look at the cache. So if you want to see a little more detail about what's going on under the covers, the cache displays are showing me for every one of those connections. How much traffic am I pushing? Uh, what's the address? What match action tables does it go into and everything else? All this is available to our DevOps community, to folks like yourselves, so you can use it as a jumping off point for new applications. Now, I'm gonna wrap this up in just a minute. I think I'm gonna show you the deprovisioning action in a second, because just as quickly as I put those optical links in place, I can take them back down. While I'm doing that, other open daylight panes are also provisioning traffic in the ethernet switches at various nodes on this network. So I'm provisioning the whole thing from one controller. I don't have to. I could partition the physical network, and I could provision one slice using open daylight and another using floodlight, and it wouldn't matter. I might want to do that, for instance, if I've got a latency-sensitive application, and I'm concerned about the, uh, the geographic uh, dispersion on the link. So things are too far apart, I'm seeing too much delay. Maybe I want to keep the controller closer to the system that I'm working on. I've got the ability to do that with this hierarchical controller structure. So again, all of this is code that we wrote natively inside the Open Daylight API. So the graphical display, the, uh, the flow tables that I'm showing you, the drag and drop single click provisioning, the interface between Open Daylight and Adva's hypervisor, which then goes down and talks to the boxes using SNMP. It was all stuff that we built and demoed. So with that, I think that I can skip back over to my deck to conclude. Let's see if I can get up my conclusion slide real quick. That'll be fun. Come on. All the way down here. All right, there we go. Okay, so, so let's wrap this up. I'm not, there it goes. So what have I shown you today? Well, I showed you dynamic provisioning. You can't put up an optical wavelength today in less than days or weeks. I can do it in 60 seconds. I've shown you provisioning networks within the data center and networks between multiple data centers. So multi-layer, optical packet over IP as well as plain old ethernet from a single controller. I've shown you code that we wrote to the uh, Open Daylight API that lets me natively launch control for the optical network with a GUI that we put on top and we ported that whole thing to a mobile platform. I didn't explicitly show you the virtual slicing. I'm going to talk about that in a little more detail during my DevNet Zone session at 1 o'clock this afternoon. With that, I think I am just about out of time. Let me see if there's one or two really quick questions before I have to go. Great. Uh, we'll start with Charles and we'll come back to you in a second. Very good. Yes. Um, just a question on what you're using for the topology uh, visualization that you did showing the boxes. Are you using the deluxe framework within Open Daylight or is that just all 
code you wrote yourself? We originally wrote it ourselves to our own GUI, but we then ported it over into Lux, so I can now do it with that if I want to. The demo that you saw, though, was all our own graphical code. That wasn't Lux that you saw. Okay, okay any other questions? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Okay. Apart from the provisioning, I'm also looking at the infrastructure side of things. I'm looking at a field engineer. Are you able to, let's say, uh, draw that you need a link from here to here and model a data center and give actual instructions to a field engineer? That's a good question. Yes, we can do field engineering type of things with this as well. So the interface to the physical boxes duplicates what you would get off of the GUI. The APIs are very good. For the optical boxes, we're limited a little bit by the MIB, but if we write a custom MIB, we can get around that. So basically anything you could do as a field engineer from the CLI, you can do from this. We can also write a script to do troubleshooting. So if there was a problem showing up on one of those links and you didn't understand why, we could have a set of screens that would walk you through step by step check this, check that, tell me what's going on with instructions on how to override the automatic provisioning if there was a problem. The other thing that I didn't show you is we have a sandbox in this. So you can save the network configuration that's stable. You can play around in the sandbox and emulate what might happen if you push more traffic over it. If you like that, you can move that provisioning on and make it live. If not, you can back off just like you would with any other Cisco networking box. So yeah, there's definitely applications to the field engineering view on this. Okay. Okay, with that, thank you very much. We appreciate your time and we'll see you this afternoon Thanks, at everybody. one o'clock.